So today I'm going to talk about water parameters. I've been getting a lot of questions over the years about water parameters and it's something I've never properly really made a video about or explained that much, especially with my setups. And it is something that's super important. So today I'm going to hopefully simplify it today because it can get kind of confusing. Obviously, there's different parameters that are more important to you know fish only setups, to salt reef tanks, and then playing the tanks of course, which is what we do. But today I'm just going to talk about the parameters that are just important that we only care about when it comes to planted aquariums. So hopefully I can make it simple today, but I got a nice little simple drawing here. Not really drawing, just numbers of explaining kind of what everything means. And hopefully I can make it super simple. So first one that we all know is pH. So pH is probably the more easier one. It's the one that everybody can understand more easier. Obviously pH can range from 1 to 14. And we all know that's depending on what it is, it could be either soft or hard water. And we, we measure that by, you know, what your pH is. Now, in planted aquariums, we worry about having soft water. So we look for more of that acidic to neutral pH. Um, plants just do not do good in hard water. So when you have hard water, especially super hard water, in some places that you guys love, might live, you guys might have super hard water some places have soft water so if you have soft water you're kind of in luck because that's usually what we look for but if you have hard water different ways to solve that RO water which can it's a expensive up cost by an RO system and then you know all the supplies to even do that buckets and fruit trash cans to make the water but it's definitely a great investment if you're doing you know a lot of high-tech setups it just makes a world of difference when it comes to actual parameters itself and you know the growth through plants and your fish are going to appreciate it a lot more too, especially the fish that we usually will put in our planted aquariums that like that little bit of more acidic water. So, so what I mean by acidic or neutral, we, we aim in the planted aquarium for really that 6 to 8 pH. That's usually the range. Now, we got to take into consideration that if you're running CO2, that obviously CO2 will make your water more acidic. And if you're running it at the right amount, it's at least going to drop it by 1.0. So, if you have say if you have 6.0 is it's going to maybe drop to 5 so you might have to actually raise that up a little bit because you don't want it too low but say if you have like 6 or 7 and it drops it down to 6.0 or 7.0 I wouldn't even worry about it it's perfectly fine I think some people what they mess mess up on the most is trying to chase pH and that's one of the biggest mistakes I think in keeping fish it just it just makes a big headache and at the end of the day if you don't keep up with it and your pH is going to be all over the place and it's just going to ruin everything more so my big thing that I guess you could take away from pH from this video is just to keep it consistent. Don't mess with it unless it's just crazy high or just crazy low. But your fish will adjust to it, your plants will adjust to it as long as it's close. So, so after pH, there's only really three parameters that we really care about in the planet aquarium. There's others, you know, there's all kinds of stuff we could talk about, but really, I mean, that's there's so much stuff that doesn't really matter when it comes to planted aquariums and throughout the years these are really the the, the main four pH being included in that so the next year are going to be GH, KH, and then TDS which TDS kind of is combining you know KH and JH but we'll, we'll get to that in a second so the second one I want to talk about is GH now that's general hardness so what that means is it's kind of connected to the pH meaning of how soft or hard your water is general hardness you know it's calcium magnesium which is you know if you break it down that's what it is scientifically so so again the way we measure the general hardness I mean there's test kits and this goes for KH too there's test kits the one I use the most is APIs you know the glass vials just like the master kit they have a separate one you can buy it's glass vial and actually so I don't it's the, to me it's one of the more accurate ones out there and it's super easy I mean it's just dropping it into the color changes and, and then counting the drops and that's what your pH is by degrees so it's super simple I mean there's probably ones that are digital out there and ones that are may, maybe a little bit better but the API one seems really good and it's what actually most people end up using because how fast and usually very accurate it is but so GH, the way we measure it is in degrees or PPM. Some people go by PPMs. It, it really doesn't matter, but degree, I'll show you. I wrote down both just in case, so if you guys can translate it. But in the planet tanks, we usually go for 
GH of you know four to eight, and because obviously we we don't want hard water, so really any of these past eight are really we don't need to worry about. But I do have them on there just to show you guys with show you guys the levels of hardness. But I mean, when I say what we mean by four to eight, now zero to four. The only reason your GH would ever be that low is if you're using RO water in which we strip out all that minerals and that also strips out KH, GH, chloramines, it just goes all the way down to zero TDS, which we will get into TDS, but that's what it means, just zero anything, just pure water. And so if you're if you're using a plant tank and you're going off the tap, you're probably always gonna be in that four to eight, even maybe even that eight to twelve range and that's perfectly fine. But the reason you might see a lot of these high tech setups or a lot of these great aquascapers, they might say their GH is, you know, like right at four, maybe three or four. That's only because we're used to RO water and when we remineralize, we just remineralize so much and we're not trying to like raise it by that much because it also raises the TDS by quite a bit. So we only shoot for like three or four. But I mean, if you're in that four to eight range, that's perfectly normal. That's usually what fish like fit the plants will do just fine and a, G a K GH like that so and it's still in that soft range so next would be that cage now people get confused because they think KH is similar to GH or at least the same thing and it's not so KH is carbonate hardness which it basically the best way I could explain it that's make it sound confusing is think of it as like a trash can or a house the bigger the trash can, the more trash, the bigger the house, the more people you can fit in there. And so, and what I mean by how it relates to pH is because it, it, it makes sure that the pH doesn't go all crazy. So the, the bigger, the higher the cage is, the, more, the unlikely that it is that the pH will swing and go all over the place. If you have a low cage, your pH might jump all over the place. It might, it might go super high, it might go dip down back super low it just goes all over the place so having the more kh is the more the better really i mean you don't want to get crazy high but you know even if you have an 8 to 12 or 12 to 18 i wouldn't even worry about a cage is something that also people sometimes end up getting confused and chase and something i've also done i've seen the chase cage sometimes and at the end of the day you don't need a cage you don't need a chase low cage it just does not matter it does not affect the plants whatsoever so it's really better at the end of the day to have a little bit higher. And again, the only reason you see like these high tech setups and they'll say they have, you know, like a, a three to four GH and then have like a same, same amount of cage, like three to four, five, six, you know, in that low range. You might be wondering why they have so low. That's because we also use RO water. And when you use RO water, again, it strips out all those minerals in which we have such low cage. And so when we remineralize, it's only so much in like me, I, most people will only remineralize GH only. Obviously, if we, I, I have something like shrimp mineral which remineralizes GH and KH, but most of the time, you really just need to worry about mineralizing that GH general hardness more. And then, like, if you're using like me, like 88 Ferts, or like Brady K, we'll rate the KH already. So, you don't want to, like, you just don't want to add, be adding all that KH, even though it really doesn't matter. But as long as you're getting some type of KH, you're fine. And the last topic is TDS. And actually, when I was mentioning pH, I forgot to mention, you know, they make all type of pH tests. There's ones that change color, you know, match the color, there's test strips. They're fine, it's just, they're never accurate, really. I mean, they can get you close, but they're never gonna tell you to the dot what it is. So I recommend, a, if you can, if it's in your budget, definitely get a digital one. My personal recommendation would be a hand checker one. This one's actually not that bad, it's like 40 bucks, brand new, and it just works great. You know, you take the cap off and you got a probe in there and you stick it in the water. And make sure you don't have a, so much flow in your tank. If you need to, you can dump out, a, you can pour some tank water in a cup and then test it that way. But it just turns on and you have a little digital and you can see, I mean, you just, just it tells you exactly what your pH is. And then so, 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 T, so TDS, so what is TDS? That is total dissolved solids. Now that basically just means anything in the water column, total dissolved solids. So anything that dissolves into the water column is gonna add to your TDS. So that could be ferts, that could be, you know, 
GH that could be magnesium, calcium. Again, you know, if you had a first year tank, that could be, you know, your stones leaching calcium. If you have those stones that that leach calcium, like Sears stone, for example, a very popular stone, which I have on my 90p, and that leaches calcium like crazy because I have over 100 pounds in that tank. So it does raise, you know, drop general hardness and KH a lot naturally. And so, or medication, I mean, just literally anything that dissolves into the water column is going to raise your TDH. So just remember that because some people think when they're measuring this, they think it means like, they think they're measuring just GH and that's not true. It measures literally anything that they can detect, that it detects in the water column. So just be aware of that. And what's nice about these, and this is also a hand checker, so this one's super nice. Again, not, not bad of a price, like 40 bucks, and this is really like the best one out there. Any hand checker is going to be really good and accurate. So again, you know, turn it on, and this one's super easy. Literally just dump it in a tank, and it gives you a reading within seconds. So, and the thing about TDS, the good thing is, is once you get to know your tank, and, you know, you got your consistent dosing and furts and, and you know exactly what your TDS is going to be with your furts and when you remineralize and all that that when, it, when it's if you go to check it one day and it's like crazy high than normal then you know something's wrong and that could be detecting ammonia nitrate it could be overdosing something you know so it's really a problem solver it's really even if you don't plant tanks it's a good thing to have in general because if you get to know your tank and then you test it and numbers are all over the place or super low or super high then you, you know something's wrong. It won't tell you exactly what's wrong, but at least you can be alerted and know something's up and I need to check it out. And so, in TDS, we also measure that, you know, obviously it does mean hardness, but we, we wanna, when we say hardness, we were, when we test the TDS of like RO water or straight at the tap, that's like the true hardness. Once, once it's in its tank, it changes because when you're putting all different stuff in there, you're measuring all kinds of other stuff. So, so we, so you could have like putting in like my tank. I could be putting salt, soft water into my tank, which is RODI. Putting in soft water, and then after I dose all my furs and go all crazy, like for example, and then plus my stones, which least least calcium to the water, my TDS could easily be, you know, a little over 200. And going off the scale, that means my water's kind of hard. Well, obviously my water's not hard because I know exactly what I'm putting in there, which is RDI, which is very soft water, but after you mineralize, you know, it's in that neutral soft range. So that's why it gets kind of confusing like that. But even though like your TES, your people think, oh, my water's hard. Well, it's not, it's just all that extra stuff in your tank reading differently. So, but again, like TDS in a plant tank, we usually go for that like 120 to 130 PPM range. And sometimes that's harder to achieve, especially when you have like a lot of stones like I do in my 90p, which just leaches calcium like crazy. And I do 250% water changes a week, so sometimes I'm I'm pretty good. Like I, it'll, by the time I do my water change, it's about like 160, but that's still pretty good. And obviously just all that. And using ADA first always helps too. It's so lean that it doesn't add much to the TDS. So, and TDS is usually important really because, especially really the only thing is, Obviously your plants, you know, having that soft water is the most important, but fish don't really, you know, you don't really have to worry about fish, you know, in TDS, but shrimp, for example, if you're keeping a lot of designer shrimps, you know, Caridia or Romanos, yeah, they, they prefer like a lower TDS in that, you know, 120 to 140 range. So that's something to watch out for, but a TDS is just overall, if you learn one thing for TDS, it's just a good tool to have. And they can actually, it can really tell you a lot of things about your aquarium but just remember it just won't tell you exactly what's wrong that that you have to be the person to figure that out but it definitely will tell you hey something's up so i hope i i explain that as good as possible i mean i know i can sound confusing myself i know when i when i talk about a topic that it can get a lot of confusing i know i don't sound exactly right either but Hopefully I made a, a little bit of sense and made it sound a little bit simpler instead of, you know, reading a lot of articles on Google and it, it can get really confusing super quick. So if you guys have any more questions, definitely let me know down below or follow my Instagram at JJ Aquariums and you guys can ask me questions all you want on those. So definitely, definitely do that if you need to. But other than that, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.
tirer un expédium.